어. everybody I am here today with a color tuber tag that's right I got singled out um, I'm kidding so Erin over at simple art Erin you guys probably know her as simple art for adults uh, she started a, a hashtag for June a color tuber tag called June juxtaposition um, shortened up it's hashtag June jux J U X um, and I really like the idea of this hashtag because it is a hashtag that is showing the journey um, of where we started to where we are right now in our in our coloring abilities and the text techniques that we learned um, and just where practice has gotten us because if you guys know me by now I'm not a technical colorist do I like trying it of course I love going and watching tutorial videos and trying it but I also know that I don't hold myself to that high standard of it has to look like that because I color differently than they do we all do you guys don't color like me I don't color like you we all have our different styles so nothing's ever going to look exactly like somebody's tutorial we can come close but that's about it um, and you know with the world that we live in now and especially Instagram Instagram is a museum of art everybody's art you can scroll through Instagram and within the coloring community and see picture after picture of beautiful pieces that people have done flawless skin and um, hair that looks like you can touch it and it's an intimidating especially for beginners it's very intimidating because you feel that you have to put yourself up to that standard for your art to be beautiful and it it's not like that our art and our coloring um, most of us turn to for some sort of therapy or some sort of stress relief or just to relax when we had a bad day so I do love this hashtag and I'm going to um, well I'll show you guys where I began so I started coloring back in October of 2018 this was the very first picture that I colored it was out of a dollar store book um, called the coloring for adult animals I believe was the name of it I tore it out I no longer have the book um, but this was my first adult coloring book I, I've colored most of my life I normally used you know the regular coloring books that we all know with the recycled paper kind of grayish tannish looking paper with some crayons or markers or whatever we had um, and then I got my adult coloring books and this one I did with Crayola Crayola was it Crayola or crazy art I want to say this one was Crayola um, Crayola colored pencils and I think I threw the whole box at this bright colorful thing there's no blending there's no shading there's no nothing except for straight coloring but I had fun doing it and looking at it now I'm like okay so I could have done so many things different but it's me on a page and where my journey started and I love it I love the fact that I can look at this and I can reflect I keep this in my binder you guys have seen my binder of finished pages um, and I keep this in the binder to remind me of where I started um, so not long after this I colored some other pages um, always buying you know my Dollar General books because I once wasn't introduced to the world of Amazon yet oh but once I was there was there was no stopping me oh my word no stopping me total addict I should have went to meetings like it was bad um, and then I begged and begged and begged and begged and begged for a set of Prismas and finally my husband gave in and he took me over to Michael's and we got my first set of 150 Prisma colors um, so excited well while I was at Michael's I picked up this book um, a million owls and I was like okay I just want to see what these prismas can do now at this point I was then on to YouTube and watching all all these people do this amazing stuff with blending and shading and oh my god what the heck are they doing um, so I got this book and I decided that I just wanted to start playing so that's what I did I just started playing and you know I thought that I could do like pink to orange to red um, and it kind of looks okay I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer so this way you guys can see all the mistakes, all the flaws, all the everythings. Okay, here we go. 
Um, but I was I was enjoying it. I was like, okay, well, I can kind of sort of do what the professionals do because at the time that's how I felt. You know, like everybody was just magnificent. Um, now, if I did one of these owls, completely different, completely different. And this is the only page I'd done in this book. All right. So then after that, uh, I told you guys I got addicted to Amazon. So the very first book I got, because, you know, watching YouTube, everybody had a Hannah Lynn book. Everybody did. So I got this one. I watched actually um, a tutorial from Peta Hewitt, and she did a picture in here. It was actually the picture. Let's see if I can find it real quick. But she, the one that she did was in the pocket size. Well, at the time, I didn't know that I could get a pocket size and a regular size. Like, I didn't know. So here I am on Amazon, and I'm like, dude, 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 oh, that's the book that Peter Hewitt was coloring in. You know, I want to have that book, and I need it. And, and needless to say, I got it. And, oh, it was this picture right here. Um, I got it, and I looked at this picture, and I'm like, whew, that's a lot to color. Like, it was just a lot. And then I was afraid that I was going to screw it up, so I never did color this picture. Um, and I now have this book on PDF, and that's normally what I color off of. But... So the big craze on YouTube at the time was um, a marker base with colored pencil over top. So I saved up some money and I got the Studio 7 ones because, you know, they kept telling me that I needed brush markers. Like, brush markers were just the, so much better and that's all I kept hearing. So I went and I got some Studio 71 markers and I got out my colored pencils and I created her. And I was so proud of her and her. Her hair, oh my god, now I just laugh at it. Um, Faith over at Faithful Mess and Beth, Cora Beth Colors, uh, both of them have channels. Um, they absolutely love this picture. Me, I'm like, oh my god, because I, I can see where I didn't, my markers got splotchy here and here, and I just kind of outlined the face with a very light something another, and um, the light in the eyes are all wrong, and the hair, oh, what was I thinking with the hair? Uh, and she's all splotchy down here, but I had fun coloring her. I did because it was my first one. And I remember being so proud of this. I was actually off of work with pneumonia when I started coloring this and Ricky was at work and I would just kept texting him updated pictures like, oh, look at this and oh, look at that. And I was so proud of it. Now looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. And you know, he probably thought it was beautiful too because he doesn't really color. Um, and now I'm like, I could have done things differently. And I think that's what the point of this is, is looking back and say, okay, I learned how to do hair a little bit better. I've learned to, when I do my markers, not to be so splotchy and, um, and all of that. So yes, this was, this was the next one of my, uh, masterpieces. And then I got this book and I'm like, okay, screw the marker stuff. We're not going to do that no more. Not right now. I'm not ready for markers. We're just going to do straight pencils. So I got this book and I pulled out my pencils um, and I did this page. Now, this page is not horrible, it's just not good. So I did this page and you can see the date on it was October the 8th of 2018. Um, and I kind of sort of attempted to shade a little bit of something. Uh, it's just not right. The shadows aren't right. The shading is not right. At least, you know, in my eyes. But I did it. And, like, I did my... I tried pastels for the first time. Soft pastels on the, the grass and the sky. And I was like, ooh, these are kind of nice, too. Uh, and I was just playing with everything. Like, everything I seen on YouTube, it was like, I have to have it. I have to have it. I have to try it. And I think I'm still that way. Like, I just have that addictive personality where I have to try it. Even if I don't like it, then I donate it to somebody else. But I have to always try it. Um... But yeah, so this was this was still back in October um, when my color journey began. So as you guys could see, I had no clue what I was doing, none at all, but I had fun doing it. And with that, I just kept practicing over and over and over again, um, trying to figure out uh, how to do the things that I wanted to do. Well, along that journey, I ended up um, this was my first page that I was just, oh my God, so excited over. I cannot believe that I finished it. It took me two days. And I mean, I literally was in the same room for two days straight. I swear. I, I was just like, I locked myself in there and all I did was color. And I did this page. Um, and the Kirby Roseanne's Mythomorphia. 
and I had fun doing it, but I was a nervous wreck. And I can still, like, when I look at her skin, um, I'm still like, mm, I would have done that a little bit different. It would, you know, but I did have fun doing it. And looking at this picture compared to my other picture, I can see differences. You know, I can see where I shaded a little bit more, um, where I got a little bit more brave with color selections and um, trying different skin tones and things like that. Uh, so I really, really enjoyed doing this, you know, ac across my journey. Um, a little bit more recent since I started my YouTube channel and I started my YouTube channel you guys know uh, mainly for community projects I wanted to get the whole community involved and not only that it's therapeutic to me I know it's therapeutic to some of you guys to just sit and chat and we're gonna color and try new things and get really creative um, think outside of the box at times and just be who we are together and be in a comfortable place doing it where there is no drama where there is um, no judgment uh, but I did this one on my channel and it was the first time that I did stuff like the hydrangeas and um, I've never done hydrangeas until this picture and even blonde hair I this was the first time that I did blonde ish hair it's more yellow than blonde um, and that's just me being you know my worst critic because we all are but yes I did this picture and I had a blast in the Sakuams book um, I loved how it turned out. My skin is a little bit light, but it got, it's still developing. It's still getting better. Um, but on her, I really like the pale skin. So this is where I was. And then one of my latest ones that I know you've all seen is my Blue Bell Fairy from Christine Caron, where I got a lot more brave. I tried a new skin tone. I did my... Uh, my wings, my fabric uh, looks dimensional and all those things. And although this is a bluebell thing, um, I like being different. I like being outside of the box. I know that these are supposed to be blue, but why color them blue when we don't have to? We don't have to do what they're supposed to be. We can get creative and we can color things whatever color they want it to be. You know, if I wanted to make her purple, I can make her purple or blue or green or pink or whatever. Um... But this is where my journey has led me now, where I can get to the point where I can kind of start playing with different colors and figuring out, um, you know, different skin tones and different ways to make fabric look more realistic um, or just playing around with some effects for wings and things like that. And I'm really proud of, you know, where I came from October to now, you know, it's, it's not that long of a time period. But it took me a, a long time. It took me, I shouldn't say a long time because we shouldn't measure it in days or years. We should measure it in, like I measure mine in hours of coloring. It took me many, many hours of coloring to get where I am and just practice and practice and practice and mess up and um, try, you know, whenever I mess up, I always try to fix the picture. I don't always, I can't always fix my big screw ups. But I always just try, and even if I messed up the skin tone, I'll move over to see if I can at least do the wings on point, or, you know, the flowers, or the fabric, because even though her skin's screwed up, doesn't mean I still can't learn from the page, and that's what I always try to do. So, if you go back, now let's go back, side by side, first picture, last picture. It looks like two totally different colorists, but they were all me. And it's me on both of these pages. Um, and that's kind of, you know, that's Aaron's point of this whole hashtag is just to show where you were to where you are. And uh, Aaron, thank you so much for tagging me in this hashtag. I so appreciate it. Um, I think it's a fabulous idea. I also think that um, you reaching out and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, showing people that they don't have to be a critic because we all started, you know, here or even worse yet, lightning hair girl. You know, we all started here. But we can still get here. You know, and I, I appreciate that you doing this and you showing everybody, the community, um, just how much fun things can be. Because I think that that's a, a, what, it, what it's about. It's about going from this to this and watching your journey. Okay, guys. A couple of things while you guys are looking at my hot messes. Uh, number one. 
Aaron is generously doing a giveaway on this hashtag. So you need to go and everything's going to be down in the description, guys. You need to go and you need to be subscribed to Aaron at Simple Art Aaron. You need to go and join the Facebook group, The Coloring Connection. They have an album in there called June Jux. You need to take your first picture and your most recent picture or close to one of your first pictures. It doesn't have to be the first picture. Um, but your beginning and where you are now, use the hashtag June Jux. Um, and tell us, tell us A, um, how you feel about your journey, how long you've been coloring for. Please, please, please make sure that you put both the book and the artist. Um, give them credit. Always, you guys, whenever you're posting, always give um, the artist credit and then name their book because I'm a bad one like if I seen this picture and I didn't know where it came from but I love the picture I'm gonna be like hey what book is that because I need it like in my life right now so a to give the artist credit always always put the artist up there B so you don't get messages from crazy people like me asking you hey what book is it over and over and over um, so yes always give credit number whatever number I'm on I get to tag two color tubers and the two color tubers I'm going to tag are two that have been both influential and um, and very supportive of me um, one is Cora Beth colors uh, she's very new to YouTube her links down in the description so make sure you go and check her out she's new to YouTube she does not live stream yet I'm working on it um, but she colors fabulously. If you go and you watch her fabric tutorial, uh, it's gorgeous. Um, she just did the Little Red Riding Hood one. And although she puts like 17,000 layers on there, it is beautiful. And she just, to me, Beth kind of shows you to take your time and to let the process work. And you can get better and better. Um, or the fact that she got on and she used her fine liners. And she shows you how to take your fine liners um, and use them as a shading tool. That was fabulous. That video she put out, I think it was last week or the week before. Um, and so that is one that I want to tag. So Cora, Beth, you know who you are, Turbo. I nominate you to do your June Jux. Make sure that you tag me, tag Aaron, and share your stuff over at your Facebook group, The Coloring Connection. Um, and, uh, let us see your journey. So number two is, and then I'll get back because I just jumped ahead. Number two is the lovely, lovely May Brox. Again, if you don't know who May is, her links will be down in the description. Um, May is somebody that um, is very inspirational to me. Not only does she color beautifully uh, and watercolor beautifully, and well, it seems like anything she touches, she can just make magic with. Um, but she's just down to earth. Like May to me is that real person. She's not going to be fake. She's not going to nothing. She's going to be like, this is who I am. And I love you all. And period. But May is a very intimidating colorist for the fact is she can take a page. She can do this real quick and then bam, it's gorgeous. Uh, so I know that I was always intimidated by May and just her, her skills and now, um, being in this coloring community a little bit longer, um, I, I realize that it takes a journey to get there. And I know May's been around for a long time. Um, I didn't say getting around. I said been around. Let me clarify that. And I would love to see where her journey took her, where her journey started and to where she is now and all the beautiful work that we get to enjoy that she does. Um, so once again, May and Beth, I nominate both of you to do the June Jux and I cannot wait for your videos. And I'd like you two to both nominate two more color tubers and see um, if we can get this chain going and see everybody's journey because I think that people can really appreciate that. Um, okay, real quick for Aaron, because I did go off on a rabbit trail because I got excited. Um, Aaron is doing a giveaway. So you got to go over there to Coloring Connection 
and uh, put your pictures in the album. Tell us a little short story. It is an international giveaway. Um, I know that she was talking about doing an Etsy gift card, maybe an Amazon gift card. As far as I know, do not quote me. She is going to do some sort of gift card. So this way, um, everybody, even international, are um, able to join. And it saves on postage and it saves on um, all those kind of costs. Because things like that can get costly if we're going to ship things. Um, so as far as I know, the last me and Erin talked, she was going to do some sort of gift card. But everybody is welcome to join. That I know for a fact. Everybody's welcome to join. Um, and participate just please always make sure you credit the artist and <clears throat> and tell us what book it is so this way if we don't have it we can get it as many of us are addicts just like myself uh but i think that about wraps it up um may beth i cannot wait i'm sure other people are excited to see your journey and where things have taken you um and just uh just to show everybody that you're human too and we all start somewhere and we all get somewhere and from even here you can just grow, keep growing and getting better um okay enough of me rambling because i do that a lot so june jux please join in let us see i'm so excited i'm over at the coloring connection i'm always scrolling through over there checking out what's going on and uh i you you guys know i love looking at your work anyway if you're going to post it on Instagram, feel free. Use Aaron's hashtag. But if you're going to enter the giveaway, you have to do it on Facebook. Um, as far as I know. Now, she might... Uh, if you follow Aaron, she might do an updated video on her channel. If you don't have Facebook, if there's another way to enter. Um, so, Or just send her a message. She loves messages. But it takes her a bit to get to get back. And that's okay because we all get busy. We all have families. We all have lives. We'd like to have it all about coloring, but that just doesn't happen sometimes. But okay, guys, I'm off for now. June Jux, don't forget. Ta-da! Love you all. Have a great day. Bye. Uh.